Welcome back to Underhill Creations. I'm John and today we're going to be doing some color casting. Now when it comes to color casting, we really have two options. We have mica powders and we have dyes. Mica powders are a dry pigment that you add to the clear resin and it adds shimmer or depth to the resin. Uh, you can only use it in clear resin. You can't use it in alumilite whites, anything that cures to an opaque color uh, because it will basically drown out the pigments. Now the bottom blank, uh, that's made with dye. That's more of a solid color, so you really you don't get the depth, but you can get some really nice color separation, some very vibrant and bright colors. So here's how you're going to receive these two products. Your mica powders are just that. They're a powder, a very fine granulated powder. And so they're going to be in a canister that you'll apply to your resin with some sort of a spoon. And your dyes are going to be a liquid or a gel type pigment uh, that you're going to use a stir stick or, or drops from the bottle itself. For the sake of this video, I just received some uh, new mica powders from Exotic Blanks called Eye Candy. They got some really great colors, some, some things that pop out. So today we're going to select from the variety that I purchased and we're going to see what we can come up with. So the next decision we have to make is what mold do we want to use? We have a couple of options. We can cast them vertically or we can cast them in a block mold. Now we're limited to how long or tall our blanks are going to be in a block mold, but we can pour five at a time and we have a little more room to manipulate color. Vertically, we're able to cast the blanks as tall as we want, as long as they fit in the, the pressure pot, depending on the tank you're using. Uh, so you can cast a six, seven, eight inch blank. It really all comes down to what you're set up to cast. For the sake of this video, we're going to pour both. Uh, so the block mold, I'm going to prepare with a little bit of mold release. And for the vertical mold, I'm going to cut the tube to the length I need. I had it marked out here. And I'm going to apply the base plugs. And they're going to go in the rack. So I want to show this little tip to you guys. This is something I like to do anytime I'm playing around with colors and I'm coming up with new ideas, maybe how I pour them or the color combinations that I'm using. I like to just take a little piece off the edge of the blank, just a small little eighth inch or so. Um, I like to, to save them in a baggie. Sometimes I'll write on them what colors they are or how I, how I uh, poured them, just to help me recall maybe later if I want to make something similar. Okay, now it's time to get all of our supplies together. So. I've got the digital scale, and I'm using Alumalite Clear. So I've weighed out the resin in equal parts to A and B to fit the molds that we're going to be using. I've also labeled the cups, as you can see on the side here, A, and I've got B on the other one. That way, if I do more than one pour in a day, it allows me to use those cups over without cross-contaminating and, and accelerating the uh, curing time. So I've got a spout bowl. This is what I'm going to mix A and B into, and then I'm going to pour them into individual cups for my color. Now, if you've noticed the top here, I've got a little bit of a spout, and what I usually do with that is I'll turn the shop light on, especially if the cups are a little cool. This time of year, that can, that can happen. Uh, I'll place the cup not on the light bulb, but over it so that I'm not touching it because I don't want to melt the cup to the bulb, but I just want to warm the cup up. And this can take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute or so. But once the cup gets warm, it allows you to manipulate a little spout in there. So it may not stay all the time, but as you flex the top of the cup, you see the spout get more uh, pointed for you. This will allow you to control the, the pour when you're pouring in your molds. Rather than having just a round edge of the cup as you pour and a big glob come out, this way you can control how much resin comes out, whether it be a larger or a smaller stream. We've also got a stir stick, and this is a, an eighth inch dowel rod. I like to use Chinese chopsticks, uh, anything that allows me to get dye on the stick and stir it into the color. I've got a measuring spoon. This is going to allow me to uh, scoop out the mica powders. I have a digital thermometer. And this is going to allow me to uh, take a reading of the resin so that I know when it's right to pour. So we'll move the scale out of the way. I 
I always like to check the temperature of the resin before I mix the two. They're at about 68 degrees. That's a nice temperature. If it's too warm, then you know you may have some problems depending on how long it takes you to mix your colors. Because this is Alumilite Clear, I know I've got about a seven minute working time. My nitrile gloves, I'm also wearing safety glasses. Now I always like to pour A into the, the cup first. A is not as thick as B. This way it allows you to mix the two together a little easier. If I were to mix B first, a lot of times what I notice is I'll have B hanging out around the edge of the cup and then uh, when I go to pour it, I don't always get the, the mixed, the A and B side mixed together as well as I want. So I always pour B into A. Next I'm going to take my electric drill. Now I have a spade bit on the end here. I, I snap the, tap, the tip off, I ground these edges round, that way I'm not going to puncture the cups. And it allows me to mix quicker. As you can see, when the two go together, it's a little cloudy, it's a little filmy. As you stir these properly, that's going to disappear and your resin is going to be clear again. What I'll do is I'll just stir around the edge of the bowl here and I'll move resin away from the edge to see if I see any film and if I do I know that I need to mix a little more. Alright, that's pretty good. Now if I were to do this by hand, smaller quantities of resin, you can come in here and you can stir it by hand and mix, but we're dealing with about 350 grams of A and B. So I want to use something that's going to be a little quicker. I don't want to use up all seven minutes of my working time trying to get my resin mixed. I want to make sure I have enough time to stir in my powders, to pour into my mold uh, without everything setting up in the bowl. We're not worried about air because we're going to use a pressure pot. We have to use a pressure pot when we're dealing with alumilite urethanes because they create gas as they cure. So we want to make sure that we uh, put them under pressure to eliminate those bubbles. What it does is finally compress the air so that you can't see it. Now, this is that new eye candy from Exotic Blanks I was showing you earlier. This is the neon UFO green. I want to see how this will pop against some some fossil gray and some black. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the two mica powders and then we're going to use some dye. Now this is urethane dye made by Alumilite to go with their resin so I know it's safe. You always want to make sure you use a dye that works properly with your resins. Now we're going to measure out the amount we want of each. I want more gray and more green than I do black. Black's going to be an accent color, so I think I want more green. Definitely more green than black. So what I like to do is, I'm going to take, I'll move these where you can see them. I'm going to take this uh, measuring spoon. There's really 
no exact formula to getting what you want because you don't know how the stuff's going to break down. But we're going to start with, with two half tablespoons. And I'll show you as we stir this how to make sure we're getting enough. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Not enough is going to leave your blanks transparent and then you're going to see your tubes through them and that's not going to be good. If you do this properly, you won't even have to paint your tubes. Put the lid back on these because we have plenty of working time. Let me tell you, the, the resin temperature is 77 degrees. So next we're going to take some black and again, I like to use a stick. Get some black on there. And stir it in. All the dyes are pretty much the same when it comes to consistency. Um, you can use a stick. I don't like to use the droppers on them because I find if you squeeze the bottle too hard, the dropper tip may break off, fall into your resin, and then you wind up with a big glob of dye in there. And if you add too much dye, what you may get if it's not mixed properly is uh, bleeding of the blank. So you want your dye to cure properly in your resin, so you don't want to add too much and affect how your resin cures. Alright, next we're going to go to the drill. We're going to mix these up. Now I like to put the drill in the bottom of the cup and, and then turn it on. This way if you leave it up here you're going to get all this airborne particle from your powders and you're not going to get it in your resin. So we're going to try to keep this all in the cup of resin. sides of the cup along like you do with everything else because particles tend to hang up on the side of the cup. Now here's how I check this. I'll put the bit next to the cup and then slowly move it away and if it disappears within an eighth of an inch I know I've got enough mica powder. If I can still see my bit through the resin as I move it away I know I need to add more color. Mix this fossil gray. we've got it properly mixed we have to make sure our resin temperature gets to the proper time. Another thing to have in handy is shop rags. I like to have shop rags to wipe everything off as I go so that I'm not cross contaminating my tools and my work service. So we're going to check the temperature again. We're at 87 degrees and depending on the volume of resin in each cup it may change. Uh, one cup may get a little warmer because usually the more resin you have in a cup, the hotter it'll get. Um, also, the top of the cup, you may have to mix it a little bit to get an even temperature throughout the resin because sometimes the top surface may be just the hair cooler because it's, it's on top. Oh yeah, this green looks good. So, to make sure we keep good color separation, we're not going to pour these until we hit around 110 to 115 degrees. Uh, if you're using Alumilite Clear Slow, it may take you a while to get to that temperature. If you're using white with dyes, you're not going to wait very long. It's going to reach that temperature very quickly. With, uh, with clear, it may, take, it may take a few minutes. 
So I'm gonna just periodically check these, keep checking these to make sure we get to the right temperature. And when we hit around 110, 115, we're gonna start pouring. All right, we're right at about 110, 112 degrees, right where we wanna be to get good color separation. So now we're gonna get these ready and we're gonna start our pour. Now I'm gonna pour these Obviously the bottom color is not going to make much of a difference, but I'm going to pour these in different directions every time because I don't want the same characteristic throughout the blank. I want to make sure that I'm getting good color coverage. Pour a couple of vertical. Now with the vertical it's a little harder because you're just going to have to layer your colors. You don't have as much room to manipulate it. So you rely on gravity to start to swirl your colors. And you can manipulate that by how high you hold the colors. If you hold the cup higher, you can get a little more sag in the, in the bottom of the cup. But I think we're right about where we're going to be. So let's put these in a pressure pot and see what we get. All right, let's take a few minutes to talk about the pressure tank. The pressure tank is basically just what it is, uh, what it sounds like. It's a tank to hold pressure to compress the air bubbles in your resin. A nice thing about the pressure tank, you can also use it to warm your block molds. It's important to have these molds not cold when you pour your resin in them. If you do, the corners of your block will roll in and you'll actually lose some of the surface in your cast. So an easy way to do that is place the mold in the bottom. Get yourself a, a clamp light and set it over the top. Usually by the time you're setting up your casting area and getting everything ready, this is a more than enough warmth uh, heat on that uh, bowl mold to get it warm to the temperature that, that you want. The ease about these pressure tanks, you can buy them to build your own or you can get them already built. Purpose Build are great. There's some great companies out there. Um, they all work the same. You're basically going to put your mold inside. You're going to hand tighten these. Get them down to where you need them. You're going to close the air valve first. Make sure this is closed before you hook your, your air line up because you don't want to flood the inside of this with pressure before you can control how fast it goes in. If it goes in too quickly, what you're going to do is blow the resin out of that mold and all over the inside of the tank. So once this is all on, everything is secure, hook your hose up to it, and then slowly open this. You're probably not going to have to open it more than halfway and it's just enough to watch that gauge climb up. For color cast, I pressurize about 40 pounds. Um, know the, the limit to your tank. Don't exceed that. I always stay at least 10 pounds under the maximum limit. And once you reach your pressure point, you're just going to close the valve and disconnect the air. Now, if you hear any hissing around the edges, uh, an easy solution to that is get yourself a pair of channel locks and just slightly tighten them until the, the hiss goes away. Sometimes these metal threads will start to get gummed up on you, and this tank's a couple years old, so it still works because I clean the threads with a wire brush every now and then, but uh, the metal threads just seem to wear out on, its, on each other, and eventually you're, not, maybe, you're, you're probably gonna have to replace the tank, you're not gonna get the tightness of that clamp, uh, that seal that you need. Uh, also, you'll notice I've got writing on top here. Because I'm uh, in the shop all the time, I, I cast probably three to four days a week. It's not uncommon for me to have three tanks going at the same time. So what I do, the minute I put the pressure uh, uh, put the pressure on the mold and I know how long I need it to cure, I'll write the time that it is to open. 
uh, on top. That way I don't accidentally open the wrong tank when I come down to, to demold. Um, after a day or so I'll take some acetone or denatured alcohol and I'll erase this and I'll start over. Okay, it's been an hour and a half and now we're going to take these out of the mold. We're going to see what we get. Pop the bottom of that off. That's ready to be re reused again. And the clear tube that this was poured in will be turned off on the lathe as we make the pen. Alright, now we're going to have to cut this on the bandsaw and go from there. Alright, I've sliced them up so you can see the inside. It's, it's hard to judge a blank by the top of the mold. Uh, you see a lot of people post that stuff online showing the tops of the molds only, but resin on the top of the mold will swirl and churn and do its own thing but what really counts is what's inside so uh, looking at these I'm extremely happy with that green I think it's really gonna pop especially with a nice CA finish when I turn it on a pen so I'm gonna take the vertical cast blank and I'm gonna take uh, one of the block molds and I'm gonna make a pen and we'll post that at the end of this and see how they turned out alright here's the finished pens uh, the blanks are dressed on a diamond neural roller ball from exotic blanks I did put a CA glue boost finish over the top of these. That way I really get a good shine out of that alumilite. I love the green. I think it pops really well with the silver and black. As you notice this top one here, we didn't get as much color mix or drag through the colors as I wanted. And that's because we didn't pour it as soon as the resin was at temperature. Remember this was the last blank we poured. So all the working time went into the block mold for the first one. And we did get some really great color swirl and separation in there. I love the colors. I'm definitely going to be using more of this UFO green and the eye candy. Uh, I can't wait to try the others. If you guys have any questions be sure to reach out. Also check back frequently with uh, Exotic Blanks YouTube channel. I'm going to be working with Ed and Dawn and hopefully uh, bringing you some more videos. I'm John Underhill. Thanks for watching.